Let's see if I can get this to work for us today. So I have quite the setup here. I don't know if I'll be able to do it through my through my computer. Hi guys. I am trying. Last week our um the video was flipped. And so this week I was hoping that I could turn around my phone and maybe see myself on my computer, but it doesn't seem to be working. So um I'm just going to talk and hopefully you can see me. You know, I'm gonna flip the camera because I can't see what you guys are saying otherwise. Let me just flip you over here. Hi. Okay. I guess that's not gonna work and that's okay. Hi everyone. Happy Sunday. It's almost Rizvan, which is so exciting at sunset today. Um, we're gonna be celebrating tonight. We're going over to my parents' house. We're sitting around a campfire six feet away from them. <laughs> and we'll be celebrating together with them outside. Um, I hope that you're able to celebrate at home today. And if you have any fun plans, I'd love to hear about them. I'm just gonna wait just a few more minutes, see if anybody else comes on here, and then we'll get started. Today we're talking about gratitude and the importance of gratitude. But as always, we'll start with our, um, our songs and prayers. Let's see, hi guys, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> okay. Em and Elsie waving at you. Hi, girls. Okay, let's get started. So we'll start with um, We Are Drops, as we often do. And for those who don't know, this is a call and repeat song. So I'll sing it first, and then you repeat. And we have hand movements. So we are drops of one ocean. We are waves of one sea. Come and join us. In our quest for unity, it's a way of life for you and me. We are flowers of one garden. We are leaves of one tree. Come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. All the world is one country. Man is one, can't you see? Come and join us in our quest for unity. It's a way of life for you and me. And then how about we do so, so powerful. You get those muscles ready. Let me see your muscles. Okay, here we go, you ready? So, so powerful, so, so powerful is the light of unity. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth, that it can illuminate the whole, the whole earth, the whole earth. Let's do it again. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is the light of unity. So, so powerful, so, so powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth, that it can illuminate the whole, the whole earth, the whole earth. Um, how about, oh God, guide me. You ready? Your fingers in the air. So here we go. I'm gonna, we're gonna sing it two times. Oh God, guide me, protect me, make of me, a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Let's do it again. O oh God, guide me, protect me, make of me a shining lamp and a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. All right, um, so the quote today is be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity because we are talking about um, gratitude today, which means thankfulness. So there is a song that is sung by, um, there's a CD at First Light, Volume 1, Soul Rise Melodies, that has put this song to, or this quote to a song, to a to 
music. I can't play it because it's on my phone, so I'm gonna try and sing it to you, and then maybe we can repeat it a few times, okay? I'm loving all the hearts, thank you so much. Um, okay. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. I gotta go a little higher. Be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. I messed it up. Okay. <laughs> be, gener be generous in prosperity. I can't even do it. I'm having a, like a total, I'm having trouble today. Anyway, the quote is be generous in prosperity and thankful in adversity. And what does that mean? Be generous means to be giving or to give more than what is expected. And prosperity is um, when you have extra of something or a lot of something. So when you have a lot of wealth or you have a lot of joy or you have a lot of patience or a lot of, you have a lot of time, to be generous means you give even more of those things away if you have extra. And thankful in adversity. Thankful means to appreciate something or to, um, to be glad that you have it. So in adversity, adversity is hardships or um, difficulties or misfortune. So when things seem really, really hard, Baha'u'llah is saying to still be thankful even when things are really difficult and hard. And I just wanna point out that if something is difficult and hard because of an injustice, like if someone is doing something that's mean or unfair, that doesn't mean that you just accept it. But if things are out of your control and you're going through some difficulties to be thankful, because we always have to stand up for justice, correct? So. Baha'u'llah is saying, be giving when you have extra and be thankful when things are difficult. And right now, things are difficult for a lot of people. So I thought generosity was a really good virtue to talk about today. Um, science is catching up with our Baha'i teachings. And that's just what's so amazing about Baha'u'llah and his teachings is that um, he's asking us to do things that sometimes the rest of the world hasn't realized yet, right? So for instance, when... I was in high school and I had to fast for the fast, not eat during the fast. People would say, oh my gosh, that's so unhealthy. I can't believe you're not eating when it's, when it's um, light outside. And now when I tell people I'm fasting for the fast, they say, oh wow, science says it's really good for you and it's really good for your health. But we knew that all along because Baha'u'llah had told us, right? So it's the same for being thankful in adversity. So one of the things that um, the scientists are now starting to tell us is when things get really, really difficult, it's really important to look for the silver lining and to be thankful. So um, I wanted to share with you something that my family does at our house. At our house, we have this gratitude book and I'm pretty sure it's for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I bought it around Thanksgiving time um, and waited to use it. But what it has in it, it has, it says the year, and um, a name and I'm grateful for but what we've been using it for instead of having each person each year for Thanksgiving tell what they're grateful for, grateful for my children and I every night we just go down the line and say what we're grateful for so I'll tell you some of the things that my kids have said my daughter has said she's thankful for having a pet we have a cat and a house to keep us safe and clean food to eat and mommy and daddy and getting to spend so much time, oh, sorry, that was mine, um, beds to sleep on. And my son has basically said every single time that he's thankful for mommy, daddy, and his sister. <laughs> mommy, daddy, and his sister, mommy, daddy, and his sister. And some of the things I've said I was thankful for, um, thought my thoughtful and generous husband. Um, let's see, good nutrition and time to be together, sunlight, clean water, and beautiful spaces to decompress, decompress and relax. So we've been using this now since September, and it's become a tradition in our bedtime routine that we talk about what we're grateful for. That might be something, if you don't already do it, you might want to do, or to do around the, the kitchen table at, um, at dinner time. So I have a number of books to read today, and I had a really hard time choosing which ones I wanted to do but I came to a decision. So we're gonna start with this one. This is called Where Happiness Lives. It's a story about mice. Have any of you ever read this book before? I had only just learned about it recently and I kind of love that 
the illustrations are layered. Okay, where happiness lives. This is an Osborne book. This is Grey Mouse in his sweet little home. He is happy and safe here and never alone. Do you see him? Look at all these other mice that he lives with. It has just enough rooms for each mouse to have fun and plenty of windows that let in the sun. There's a garden outside with a shady oak tree. I'm lucky, says Mouse. This home's perfect for me. Look at all the mice in this house. Mice jumping on the bed, mice getting in the bathtub, mice looking out the window at the birds, a mommy mouse hugging her baby mouse. This one says, I can't even read what that says, something only. And there are all these mice, look at all these mice outside. That's a home full of mice. But one day, out walking, Mouse spots a large door. It belongs to a house that is hard to ignore. There's oodles of space and a balcony too. The owner, a white mouse, looks out at the view. Good morning, calls Gray Mouse. I live down the way in a sweet little home that seemed fine till today, but your home's much bigger. I wish mine was grand. You must be the happiest mouse in the land. Look at that beautiful ivy and the flowers. The mouse on the balcony heaves a big sigh. <sighs> I was happy once, then a house caught my eye. From my favorite chair, I gaze up at its tower, and now I'm more jealous with, with each passing hour. It's simply amazing, like nothing I've seen. Please show me, says Gray Mouse. It sounds like a dream. So they scamper along, never pausing to look at the glittering fish that leap in the brook. They're too distracted to pay attention to what's all around them. They just are focusing on the house, right? And they don't see the dance to bright butterflies share or hear the soft bird song or sniff the sweet air. There's a mountain to climb, but the mice don't give in. The house at the top makes their furry heads spin. They're going all the way up there to that, that house at the top of the hill. But they're missing all the beauty around them. It's a house like no other. This house has it all. A garden with fountains, a banqueting, a banqueting hall, a dome, and a spire, both designed to impress. The brown mouse who greets them has jewels on her dress. Let's see what's in here. Oh wow, look at that banquet hall. It's huge, look how many, look how many seats there are in there. Welcome, she cries, won't you please step inside? There's lots to explore here and I'll be your guide. She rolls out the red carpet for them. She sure is a friendly mouse though, huh? She serves them fine pastries on plates made of gold, then leads them through hallways past treasures untold. The game room, the parlor, my room for guitars, and this is the dome where I gaze at the stars. She seems very friendly. What's up here? Wow, that would be so cool to have in your house, wouldn't it? Oh my, sighs the other two mice in dismay. The last of their happiness drifting away. Are they unhappy because they're jealous and they think, oh my gosh, I don't have it as good. We once were contented, but now we feel poor. The happiest mouse is the mouse who has more. Is that true? The mouse who has more is the happiest? The brown mouse says nothing, but points to a stand where a telescope rests looking over the land. What do you think she's looking at through there? Let's take a look. And there, through its lens, is a sweet little home. It doesn't have fountains, a spire, or a dome. It doesn't have treasures, there isn't the space, but each little mouse has a smile on its face. It's lonely up here, says a wealthy brown mouse, but it brightens my day just to look at that house. What a treasure it is, oh, the joy that it gives, for that is a house where true happiness lives. Whose house is she looking at? She's looking at the brown mouse's house, huh? It's my house, cries Gray Mouse. Oops, sorry, Gray Mouse. Well, who would have guessed that a mouse in a mansion could think that I'm blessed? 
whatever your home, it is happy indeed. But a uh, bee home. <laughs> if you love what you have and you have what you need, look at all those carrots. How true, cheers the white mouse, his eyes shining bright. I don't need a high tower. My home is just right. The brown mouse brings cocoa and sweet cherry pies. And they all gather round as the moon starts to rise. Then the three of them gaze at the stars hand in hand, the happiest mice in the whole of the land. I think they just made some new friends too, huh? I like that line. Where is it? Whatever your home, it is happy indeed. If you love what you have and you have what you need. Is that right? Right now we are all in our own homes. A lot of us are at least. And being thankful for what we have goes a long, long way, right? We're very fortunate to be able to stay home. A lot of us and some of us who have to go out, we're very fortunate to have those people that are going out. Okay, so the next book I'm going to read is this one, which is, has been one of my favorite books since I was a kid. Have you heard of it before? Cherries and Cherry Pits by Vera B. Williams. Ready? Okay. I'm gonna go this way. I'm sorry that all the pictures are flipped backwards. It's kind of annoying, I know. I tried to flip it around, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. Okay, here we go. Dear Papa, I still remember how you told me all those stories and how you saved the drawings I made and how you listened to the stories I told you. Love, Vera. So this is a book she's dedicating to her daddy. Bedemi lives on the floor above me. We visit back and forth a lot. Bedemi loves to draw, so when she opens the door, I'm often standing there with a marker of some kind or color she doesn't have yet. I want to get it so it's not too, uh, you can see the picture. Okay. She always tries a new marker right away. First, she makes a dot on the paper. Then she draws a line out from that dot. As she draws, she tells the story of what she's drawing. She always starts with the word this. This is the door to the subway. This is the door to the subway. And this is a man leaning on the door. I hope he doesn't fall out when the door opens all of a sudden. His face is a nice face but it's also not so nice. He has a fat wrinkle on his forehead. It's like my mother's wrinkle. It's from worrying and worrying, my mother says. And his neck is thick and his arms are thick with very big, strong muscles. His shirt is striped blue and white and his skin is dark brown. And in his great big hands, he has a small white bag. This man looks so strong. I think he could even carry a piano on his head, but he is only carrying this little white bag. I wonder what can be in that little white bag. What do you think is in that little white bag? He does look strong, huh? But he looks like he has a very friendly face. I love the illustrations in this book. I can just see that man going home to his house and walking up the stairs and opening the door to his living room. His living room has a pretty lamp and he switches it right on. His kids are in the kitchen. Dee Dee, Dennis, Dwayne, Dory, he calls. I've got something here for you. Then they come out. One sits on one of his legs and one on the other. One leans right in between. And Dee Dee, she climbs round in back and leans over his shoulder. So we know that's Dee Dee, right? Then he opens the bag and pulls out a cherry. He puts one cherry in each of their mouths and another and another, really red cherries too. And there they sit, eating the cherries and spitting out the pits eating cherries and spitting out the pits. And before you can even ask Bedemi any questions about that story, such as how come the names of all the man's children begin with D, she has another piece of paper ready and is drawing. This is the train seat. And this is a tiny white woman sitting on the train seat. She is almost as short as I am, but she is a grandmother. On her head is a black hat with a pink flower, like a rose flower. It has shiny green leaves, like the leaves in my uncle's florist shop. On her feet are old, old shoes. 
These are the buckles, and in her lap is a big black pocketbook, and in the pocketbook is a bag. You can't really see the bag, but I'll draw it anyway so you can be sure it's there. It's a little brown paper bag all twisted up tight. When this woman gets off the train, I know just where she's going. You see the little, the little bag in her pocketbook? What do you think is in that bag? Hmm. She's going to hold tight onto the banister and go up the stairs. Maybe because she's old, right? She needs the support. She's going to hold onto the walls as she walks along the street. And the door to her house is going to be right next to the shoemaker's store. She really likes to hear the shoemaker's machine going round and round and his hammer going tap, tap. She waves to him when she goes by his window. Then she climbs up the stairs and opens her door. There's just one room. It has everything she needs. This is a sink and here's the geranium plant on the window. And on the swing over the plant is her parrot. The parrot is so excited to see her coming in the house. He's calling, little lady, little lady. The parrot is red and yellow and green. It's blue too. See it? I brought something for you, the little woman tells the parrot. She untwists that little brown bag all twisted up tight. She holds it out to the parrot. The parrot takes out a cherry. It's the kind that is light red and sour. The parrot eats it right up. You like it, asks the lady. You like cherries, honey bird? She laughs and dumps all of the cherries onto the geranium plant in front of the parrot. There's your own little cherry tree, she says to the parrot. She stands next to the geranium in her stocking feet, eating cherries with the parrot. The parrot is careful to spit out the pits. They're both eating cherries and spitting out the pits. Eating cherries and spitting out the pits. I want to ask Bademi some questions, such as if she is sure the parrot spit out the pits, but she is already remem remembering a certain shoelace and a shoe. This is a shoelace. Ooh. And this is a running shoe. It's going to be purple and white. And here's the other one to match. This is going to be a boy. These are his long, long legs. This boy looks a lot like my brother. He's holding onto the straps in the subway. The train is making him rock back and forth. He's reading the signs. My brother loves to read. And this boy is tall like my brother. And he has glasses like my brother. And the same kind of cap. And the same green and black jacket too. It has the orange letters from his team. And when he smiles, you can see the space between his big front teeth like my brother's. In his pocket is a present. In all of these people's pockets have, have been presents. And they've all been kind of the same. So do you know what's in his pocket? I bet you can guess. When he gets off the train at his station, he just runs right up the escalator. He runs right along the street, jumping on and off the stoops to his house before he even gets up the stairs and can take them in. Before he even gets up the stairs and can take them in just two steps, he's hollering to his little sister, Hey, come on out here. See what I got for you. I like the way he moves. He looks like a good big brother. And before she can even look out the window, He'll be right in the room in front of her. He'll make her choose which hand, and there'll be a cherry in that closed up hand, and it'll be the big kind, such a dark red is almost black. His little sister will grab it and eat it up while he yells, don't forget to spit out the pit. Eating the cherries and spitting out the pits. Is that a story about you? I ask. No, she says, but this one is going to be about me. And she, she draws herself in her favorite beret, which is a hat. Here she is in her favorite beret. This is me. And this is my station. I have to walk up the stairs one at a time so the bright sun that is out here in the sky won't make my eyes hurt. But right here on the street, what do you think there's going to be? A man is selling cherries from the back of his truck. His whole truck is going to be cherries. Nothing but cherries. Now see this little purse? I have a little purse in my pocket with some money mama gave me. When I show it to the man, he puts a bag on the scale and puts in some cherries. But then he goes ahead and fills it right up to the top and gives it to me. 
Don't eat them up too fast, he tells me. Now, what does that man think? I wasn't going to eat them up fast because I had an important plan. I walk home eating the cherries one by one and saving the pits. Eating a cherry and saving the pit. I put every one of the pits in my pocket. If you remember before, here she is with her little purse of money. Here's the truck full of cherries. Here she is walking along, eating the cherries, and she's not spitting it out like the other characters were doing. She's saving them. All right, let's see. When I get to my street, I take them all out. I kneel right down and I poke one in the ground on the edge of our yard. Our yard is a junky old yard. It has a stump where there used to be a tree. But that tree died and they came and cut it down and took it away. Then I poke pits in the ground all over the place. I know if I plant enough of them, at least one will grow. I pat the ground smooth. I pour some water on each pit and I tell those pits to grow, grow and grow. Now, you wanna see how they grow? Bademi asked me, but she doesn't wait for an answer. She is busy laying out all of her newest markers. The green, the pink, the red, the purple, the brown, the black, and all the others. She piles up all the papers from the other stories and places a clean sheet on top. Now watch, she says. All right, do you see all these different, all these different illustrations? This is the pit right in the middle, and this is how it grows. First, it makes a little sprout that grows up. Then it makes a little root that grows down. Then that root grows more roots, so the ground is full of roots down to here. The sprout, sprout grows up to be a little trunk. Branches grow out from the trunk, and from those branches, little branches grow up into, part, into the part that is sky. The branches have dark pink buds on them. The buds open up to be light pink flowers. Then come light green leaves. But it seems like there are never going to be any cherries. Everyone is always asking, but Emmy, when in the world are those cherries ever going to be ready to eat? You have to be patient with cherries and fruit, right? And all the time, cherries will be growing right under these leaves, so tiny and green, no one even notices them. But I work hard. I come out every single day to chase away the blue jays that are trying to steal the cherries. I chase away the dogs that try to use the yard for their business and the kids who try to carve initials on the tree. Then one day I come out and the cherries are ripe. There are so many cherries. The branches reach right down to the ground. There are red cherries and dark red cherries and cherries such a deep red, they are almost black. Then the people come out the back door and the front door and down the steps. There are enough cherries for every single one of them. And even for the friends from Nairobi and Brooklyn, Toronto and St. Paul who come down in these airplanes. So here we all are standing in front of the airplanes, eating cherries and spitting out pits, eating cherries and spitting out pits. Till we all fall down from eating so many cherries and spitting out pits. Look at that beautiful illustration she made. And this cherry pit and this cherry pit and all the cherry pits start to grow until there is a whole forest of cherry trees right on our block. Oh my gosh, I love this book. It's definitely one of my favorites ever. <laughs> um, if you don't have it in your own personal library, I highly recommend it. Okay, so... Do you think that everyone who received those cherries, were they grateful for that gift? They were all gifts. People were thinking about somebody else when they gave them the cherries. Do you like cherries? My father loves cherries. And right now, it's hard for us sometimes to go to the grocery store, but my son is all about berries. And so when we're able to get a grocery run, the berries, I think he's probably the most grateful for. Um, what are you most grateful for right now? What do you think? There's so many things to be grateful for. I'm gonna read one more book. I know you guys are being very, very patient, and then we'll do it in our project. This book's called The Thank You Letter by Jane Cabrera. Um, and I, my daughter is actually epileptic. She gets, she has seizures sometimes. She's completely healthy. She's 
a normal kid, but she does sometimes have to go to the hospital because she has seizures. And so what we are very, very thankful for is medical staff and um, for people who take care of her when she goes. Um, so my sister, my sister, I'm sorry, my daughter today um, made something for a local friend who's an ER doctor. And I'm gonna show that to you in a few minutes. But one of the things I thought we could think about are um, people that we're grateful for or things that we're grateful for in our lives right now. Um, sometimes when things seem a little bit difficult and hard, it's hard to remember that there are so many beautiful things in this world and there are so many people that wanna help each other. So this one is all about thank you letters. And I thought maybe today we could write some thank you letters and thank you pictures to send to people. All right, so the thank you letter. Can you see okay? Okay. Grace's birthday was almost here. She had written a list. Things I would like for my birthday. A puppy, a robot, books on how to build a den, sparkly shoes, pens and paints, magic wings, tent and camping things, and lots and lots of chocolate. Oh my gosh, my birthday list would always have lots and lots of chocolate on it. The day of the party arrived and it was a costume party. How fun. Oh my gosh, I want a costume party right now. Maybe we should have a digital costume party, guys. <laughs> that might be, that might have to be in the works. Okay, there were games and ice cream and presents and the sun shone all day. That sounds like quite a special birthday. The next day, Grace got out her new pens and pencils to write thank you letters. Dear Nana and Grandpops, thank you for my puppy, love Grace, called Bob, although she didn't write that what she really wanted was a real puppy. I think they gave her a stuffed puppy. What do you think? Dear Taye, thank you for the magic wings. I have not tested the magic yet. Love, Grace. Dear Millie and Billy, thank you for your for my sparkly shoes. Love your favorite cousin, Grace. Ooh, green sparkly shoes. Dear Aunt Mary, thank you for the gloves. They're a little too big at the moment. Love, Grace. Dear Poppy, thank you for the soft toy. I have called it Jeffrey. Love, Grace. Did you see what she has next to her name here? I know it's all backwards, but this is an X. X. And what an X means, X and O's, do you guys know what that means when you sign a letter XOXO or XX or OO? X means hug and O, I'm sorry, X means kiss and hug means O. So she's saying Grace mwah, with a kiss. She only stopped for one quick snack. Dear mom and dad, thank you for my fun party and for the bestest tent ever. Love me, Grace. See how she put three X's there? Kiss, kiss, kiss. That friendly bear, bing, pizza, and lemonade. It's good she thanked her parents for that party. Dear Jayla, thank you for the pens and pencils. I love them. Love, Grace. Dear Noah, thank you for the most awesome robot costume. Love your sister, Grace. That was thoughtful of her brother, huh? But Grace did not stop there. Next, she wrote a thank you to her cat. <laughs> Tiggles, thank you for being so soft and cuddly. Love, Grace. Do you see what she has all around her? She has envelopes and a notepad and her pencils and stamps. A thank you to the lady in the thrift store. Dear Mimi, thank you for being so kind and always giving me candy. Love, Grace. A thank you to her favorite teacher. Dear Mr. Jones, thank you for teaching me my letters. Love, Grace. A thank you to her dog. Bing, thank you for your funny, waggy tail. Woof, woof, love, Grace. Grace even wrote a thank you to the sky. She put it on a tree as high as she could reach. Dear sky, thank you for being so blue today. Love from Grace. We'll scroll down to there. And still she wrote some more. Writing and writing and writing. She's sending all of her thank yous. Soon thank you letters appeared all over town. They made ev everyone very, very happy. 
Even that little baby has a thank you letter. This duck has a thank you letter. Look at all those, the pigeon. It makes them happy and it makes her happy too. So one afternoon when Grace came home from school, she ran to her new tent and what is in her tent? Should we look? It was full of love notes. I love your writing, Grace. Love, Mr. Jones. I love you. We love our Grace. I love your style. Love, Mimi. I love you, Billy and Millie. I love that you are my friend. I love your smile. I love that you put letters everywhere, Mrs. B. Love you, love you, love you. I love your pens. We love your dancing. I love your kindness. Sometimes that's exactly what a love note is, huh? When you write a thank you note, you're actually writing a love note. We love you so much. Love notes everywhere. Grace read each and every one. Of course, she then wrote lots of her own, along with one last special thank you letter. One for the owl, one for the guinea pig, one for the dog, one for the little snail. Oh my goodness. Dear reader, thank you for reading this book. Love, Grace. All right. You guys have been so patient. We read three books today. That's quite a bit, huh? So now I was thinking... Um, I would love if you would talk to your grownups and decide someone or something that you're thankful for or grateful for. It can be um, outside of your house, like it can be a fire, it can be firefighters, it can be police officers, it can be um, hospital staff, it can be your teachers who you haven't seen maybe in a long time, it can be friends, it can be family members, it can be your cat if you want. Um, someone that you're grateful for. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of art. We're going to, we're going to be inspired by, um, our cherries book like Bedemi and maybe use, I was thinking what I like to do is I like to use Sharpie or a pen, draw on white paper and then paint over it with watercolor. So I'm going to show you what my kids have done, what they did this morning in our other class. Let's see if I can bend this down here. Um, this is what my daughter made and she wrote, we're going to send this to my friend who is an ER doctor and who was actually there the last time she had to make a trip to the emergency room. Um, I am grateful for doctors and nurses because I'm epileptic. I've had to go to the hospital and I was well taken care of. I also fell and cut my face and the doctors and nurses were so kind as they gave me stitches. Thank you for taking good care of me and everyone else who comes to the ER. So we're gonna, we're gonna send that to our local hospital for her. And then my son wanted to make one for his good friend at school who hasn't, he hasn't been able to get together with in the last three weeks. And so I'm pretty sure this is her, her name is Valentina. Um, and he already placed a stamp, which we might need to move, we'll see. But what both of my kids did was they used Sharpie to draw their, illustration and then they use watercolor to paint it in. So that's what I thought we would do today. So I have a piece of cardstock here. You can use regular paper, you can use cardstock. Um, talk to your grown-ups and think about something or someone that you're grateful for and then let's let's uh, let's write a love note or an appreciation note to that person. Okay so I'm thinking for myself I'm gonna to write to my uh, I'm gonna to write to my father because I don't often thank him, um, but I want to thank him. So what should I draw? I'm gonna make a postcard for him. So I'm gonna cut my piece of paper in half. You can actually send a flat half piece of paper with one stamp. And so I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors. One second. That way I don't have to use an envelope. So those are a little small for my hands, but I think it'll be okay. I'm thankful to have scissors at my disposal. Okay. What are you gonna draw? I would love to hear what you end up drawing. Um, so 
I'm gonna try and draw this so that it's not upside down for you guys. I'm gonna have to come over here to do it. Maybe I'll draw it sideways, okay. So, my dad really likes cookies. He loves basketball. He's a Lakers fan. Um, but what I love about my dad is that he's always there for us when we need him. And one of my favorite things about him is that he's super sentimental, even though he doesn't seem like he would be. So anything myself or my kids have ever created or given to him, he's kept it. <laughs> and he keeps it in his office. Um, so I'm going to probably do something based on that. I didn't think about this ahead of time. So, And I'm not a very good drawer. That's my sister's. My sister's an illustrator. I'm a crafter. So we'll see what I can come up with. But I would love to hear what you guys are thankful for. Maybe when we're all done with this, you can, your parents can send me a picture or can tell me what you guys decided to do. I would love to see, see you guys working on your artwork. So what am I gonna do? Let's see. I'm gonna draw a few things that my dad loves. One of the things my dad loves is this special cake that my mom makes for him. It's a three layer almond cake. And on the top is chunky buttercream with walnuts. So here's his, here's his special cake. Another thing my dad really likes, let's see. Well, we'll make a basketball here. Okay. What else? Hmm. He loves to garden, so I'm going to I'm going to put some flowers in here somehow. Maybe I'll do some tulips. Hmm. What else? I want to know what you guys are doing. It's so strange to not be able to see. I know everyone's probably working. This morning, um, during our Zoom, our Zoom class, the kids were all sitting there together, Zooming with each other, doing their illustrations, which was pretty nice. Right now, I feel kind of weird because I'm just talking to myself, right? So let's see. What else? He likes to garden. He likes basketball. He likes cake and cookies. Should I make him some cookies? We'll do some cookies here, too. But my father likes the cookies that are covered, the sugar cookies that are covered in um, frosting. I just saw that Asher is drawing ice cream cones. Let's see. Let me go back up here. Asher's drawing ice cream cones. Soraya said she is thankful for her mom and her dog, Frankie. And Bennett is drawing her friend. Excellent. Nice job, guys. Okay, what else should I draw? Um, now, the important part is if you are going to give this to somebody, have your, if, if you can't write yourself yet, have your grown-ups write exactly what it is, you are so, why you're so thankful for that person. Um, so, for instance, when I turn this over, I'm going to put my dad's name here. His name's Grant. And then I'll put the address underneath. But over here, I'm going to write, Dear Dad, today we talked about gratitude in my children's class. I wanted 
to say how thankful I am to have a father like you. I admire your hard work. and tenderness with your children and grandchildren. Love, D-Bird, that's what my parents call me. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um... Emma is drawing a heart for her cousin. That's very sweet, Emma. Elsie is drawing herself, giving her auntie a hug. Aw. And Shada is thankful for her cousin, and Fazy is thankful for his grandma. Very nice, guys. Okay, I'm gonna now I'm gonna paint my uh, my illustrations here. I feel like I need a couple more, maybe. Hmm. Let's see. How about what else am I my dad like? I don't know. I can't think right now very well. My dad loves to travel. He's not doing much of that right now. So maybe should I draw him an airplane or a passport? I'm going to make him a passport. So here's his passport. All right, and I'm going to write passport on it. Passport. Hmm. You think that's enough things? I think so. Now I'm going to paint. All right, guys, you don't have to stick around for this, but if you'd like to, you're welcome to. And as I said before, I would love to see what you guys make. Thank you for sharing who you're creating for. And next week, we are going to be talking about hope. And we're going to make some rainbows. I know people are probably making lots of different rainbows at home, um, but we're going to make some rainbows as well. And I will make sure that I have the... Uh, list of supplies well before the day of. I'm sorry that it took so long today. I was still trying to figure out what we were going to do um, and I got distracted. <laughs> Life with little kids. So I hope we'll see you again next week. Same time, 2.30. Um, and um, we'll have some other books too. So love you guys. Send me what you make. I want to see it. Thanks, Juliet. Bye, everybody. It's my pleasure. Bye.